Hello viewers, welcome to my channel Knowledge Unlimited and in this video I am going to explain about the leftover case that is over, over damped system. So in the previous few videos we have seen all the remaining cases that is for zeta equal to 0, zeta between 0 and 1 and zeta equal to 1. This is called as critically damped case, this is called as under damped case and this is called as undamped case. And after uh, seeing critically damped we have spent a lot more time on this critically damped case because it is very important. And in this we have seen about the rise time, the peak time, the peak overshoot and the settling time. After discussion of these parameters that is called as time domain specifications, I have also gone through I have also explained the location of poles. So in this video also after deriving the poles for an over damped system that is for zeta greater than 1 for zeta greater than 1 I am going to locate the poles of this over damped system and then I am going to explain the difference of various location of poles that means for each and every case there is a certain location of the poles that will lie on the real axis and the imaginary axis so after deriving the over damped system i will sp i will spend 2 to 3 minutes on explaining about the importance of location of poles and where exactly the poles will lie so uh, why to waste time so let's get started with this under damped system so we already know that the transfer function t of s for a second order system for a second order system is omega n square by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so in this also we are going to take this as transfer function but the thing is in undamped system we have substituted directly zeta equal to 0 in the derivation and in the critically damped system we have substituted zeta equal to 1 in the derivation so there is no issue there but whereas coming to the critically damped system we have uh, we have kept the zeta as it is but by we know the condition that the value of zeta will lie between 0 and 1 so we proceed proceeded further by taking the necessary assumptions that is zeta equal to less than 1 so we have taken one common in the pole so that 1 minus zeta square is left over so we got imaginary term and real term so now i am going to manipulate this in two different ways so that you will get the feel what are the necessary changes that we have to do to get directly the over damper system function so let's get started with this so first let me take the equation transfer function that is t of s equal to omega n square by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so if you take if you equate the denominator to zero then the obtained roots are called as poles so now let me equate this to zero so directly you can uh, solve this by using s1 comma s2 equal to minus b plus or minus root over b square minus 4ac by 2a as this is quadratic equation you can substitute here or i will tell you another approach in the previous video uh, or in the uh, before videos you have you got that the roots are uh, z minus zeta omega n plus or minus j times of omega n root over 1 minus zeta square i remember this is correct but you once go through because i am not doing derivation here so i think this is correct so it is minus zeta omega n plus or minus j times of omega n root over 1 minus zeta square these are the roots that are obtained for critically damped system now as now in the critically damped system the value of zeta is between 0 and 1 so here it is positive now for an over damped system the value of zeta is greater than 1 so if 1 minus square of value that is greater than 1 will be always negative so now what i am going to take is i am going to take minus common here so my root will be minus zeta omega n plus or minus j times of root minus 1 will be again one more j omega n root over zeta square minus 1 so that's all j into j is minus 1 j square is minus 1 so you will get complete real solution so this is a very important point and to be frank this is the only important point that you should know in the under damper system because the ultimate aim 
of studying about over damper system is to know that the solutions of the over damper system are purely real so you can also uh, derive from here so let me do it from here so here you can see that b equal to 2 zeta omega n c equal to omega n square a equal to 1 now if you substitute in the roots you'll get the same so minus b that is minus 2 zeta omega n plus or minus root over b square that is 4 zeta square omega n square minus 4 into a is 1 into c is omega n square by sorry by 2a that is 2 into 1 now you can see here you can take 4 common omega n square common so it is minus 2 zeta omega n plus or minus so if, if you take that outside 2 omega n root over zeta square minus 1 by 2 2 2 will get cancelled now it is finally minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega n root over zeta square minus 1 so now you can clearly observe this is purely real because minus zeta omega n plus omega n root over zeta square minus 1 is also real and minus in both is also real it may be negative or positive that doesn't matter but the thing is it is real so now you can say from here clearly that if you draw the axis sorry if you draw the axis as this is real axis and this is imaginary axis and one more point is that those are not equal you can see s1 is not equal to s2 why because minus zeta omega n minus omega n root over zeta square minus 1 is absolutely not equal to minus zeta omega n plus omega n root over zeta square minus 1 so there will be lying on the real axis but not at the same point so this is where this is what you can call as a location of poles of over damped system you can say like this simply of an over damped system so one more thing is if you want to get the transfer function the same thing you have to go so we got the poles as some let me take s equal to as they are on negative side let me take minus a and minus b so it will be something like uh, omega n square by s plus a into s plus b simply instead of writing all i am simply writing this easily i let me guess that you guys can understand this step because i am uh, just taking those roots that is minus zeta omega n minus omega n root over zeta square minus one and uh, blah, blah blah those all i am taking as a and b for my easy way to represent and if i take my input as unit step input and the laplace transform of that is one by s then ultimately i will get my output y of s which equal to multiplication of these two that is 1 by s into omega n square by s plus a into s plus b now i will leave this as a part to work on and i will give the idea for this by using partial fractions by using partial fractions method like we have done in the previous videos see my aim my main motive of this video is for you to explain why the poles are real and where they will be located and from here you can solve by taking a by s plus b by s plus a plus c by s plus b and by solving you will get uh, some exponentials you have to take one more thing is you have to take inverse laplace to get into t domain by taking inverse laplace transform you will get somewhat like exponentials into something plus e power plus or minus i don't remember exactly another exponentials so finally you will get something like this so now i am going to plot the response so if you observe clearly for an undamped system we got an oscillatory for zeta equal to zero for zeta between zero and one we got oscillatory but it is damped this is undamped oscillatory see these are not for time pass i am plotting these are very important observations for zeta equal to zero we got undamped oscillatory with respect to time the output response here we got oscillatory but damped it is becoming to a steady state value after some time that is called as t settling time damped oscillatory 
but for zeta equal to 1 or uh, I think this is uh, for zeta equal to 1 and zeta greater than 1 you can make your own observations and you can plot them but the final thing is if this is my real axis and if this is my imaginary axis now I will use different colors for undamped system we got poles like this for undamped system purely imaginary and second for critically damped we got poles somewhere here So this is for critically damped. They are complex. And now for not critically damped, sorry, blue thing is, so let me erase that. I am becoming a bit confused. Uh, the second thing is under damped case yes the blue thing is the blue thing is for under damped case and now for critically damped case we got on the real axis at same point two poles at same point so my green is critically damped critically damped and finally today's video we have seen we have seen here on the imaginary axis so the red let me write here over damped so this is how you can distinguish by seeing the poles if you equate the denominator of the transfer function of the if you equate the denominator equal to 0 denominator of t of s equal to 0 and by getting the poles location by getting the poles location simply you can state which type of damping or uh, you can get the damping uh, ratio and where the poles and what type of system it is you can estimate on your own by simply plotting the poles or locating the poles and having the knowledge about the poles so that's all for this video and with this video we can we can say that the second order system complete analysis is completed in the next video let us discuss some new concepts in the control systems and that's all for this video see you in the see you in the next one if any doubts regarding this concept you can post in the comment section i will respond for your comments and help you if any doubts that's all for this video thank you